boys screws loose, they done stripped the bolts on them. Should have never sent them to pick up the work for them. Sprayed the park and had my shit inside the car. Marcus Smart Boy was shooting with a 36 on him. Said if he wasn't in a rush, they was all right. Hello, Chudlings. It's Friday, November 10th. It's about 10.45 here on the East Coast. Uh, the Celtics just beat the Nets, 121-107. to 107. Jalen Brown had a pretty big night, 28 points. Uh, Celtics moved to 6-2 and two on the season, 1-0 and oh in group play for the in-season tournament. Um, pretty interesting game. We're going to get dive into all that, but first I'm going to do introductions. I am, as always, your host, Doug Outs, uh, available on Twitter, at Doug underscore Outs. Also with me is King Chuddy, at King Chuddy on Twitter. Uh, you can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere you can find podcasts. We're getting a YouTube channel up and running, too. Chuddy's Corner on YouTube. Make sure you're checking that out. Like, subscribe, everywhere that you can find us. Uh, also, a special thanks, extra special thanks today to our sponsor, Nick Pereno. NickPereno.com, all your real estate needs. Uh, we got some new microphones, courtesy of our new sponsor. So uh, that shows that one, he's listening. And he was so disgusted in the audio that he got us some microphones. So thank you again, NickPereno.com, all your real estate needs. Best sponsor in the game. He's the one that keeps Chuddy's Corner running. Um, so, yeah, get diver into the game. Like I said, 121-107 win over the Brooklyn Nets. Uh, Chuddy, I'll turn it over to you right away. What are, you, what are your thoughts? What are your takeaways on this game? Nice, solid business-like win for the Celtics. Get back on track, back in the win column. Second time we've seen this Nets team, obviously, so a little bit of familiarity. I mean, they're, they're an feisty. odd team. They are very feisty, but they are very small as well. And, I mean, especially with no Simmons out there, Claxton still hurt. They didn't have Cam Thomas, their ultimate hooper, so a little banged up. We didn't have Al Horford in the lineup this time around. But you saw that without that, I mean, the Nets were starting with Dorian Finney-Smith, basically a wing player as their center. Uh, so they're kind of just playing five wings and guards. And it's interesting. It took the Celtics. The first quarter felt like it was kind of just a track meet, open gym. Both teams are going back and forth. A lot of shots going down. You mentioned Jalen. He came out super hot. I think the Celtics were up 38-33 after one. Um, something, it seemed like, was said after that first quarter because the defense in the second quarter was completely ratcheted up. Celtics looked like they kind of figured out that the Nets were running out there with five guys who could all kind of dribble and shoot. So they were swinging it around. They were driving. It seemed like the Celtics ramped up kind of their one-on-one defense. They were finishing possessions, turned the game around, and then Tatum got hot, made basically four threes in a row and kind of broke the game open, got up to a 12 point lead at halftime and really never looked back from there. More good defense in the third. And then another kind of spurt in the fourth quarter with uh, some great offense, along with a lot of bench scoring. Hauser had another nice game. Pritchard finally yeah. came alive and uh, were able to carry them over the finish line. Uh, Cornette, great minutes off the bench. I thought is the second big with no Horford. So again, they didn't really have any big men on the nets to, uh, do much of anything to us. We were able to dominate on the glass to 29 to five in second chance points and very clean with the ball, only seven turnovers for the entire game for the Celtics. So like I said, it really felt kind of business-like uh, even when it was close for a little bit, it never really felt close. And uh, they kind of just seamlessly pulled away. I thought pretty much everyone had a good game. Uh, some guys, you know, quieter than others. Brzingis only nine and two on four shot attempts tonight, but that's going to happen when you have all these different guys. I didn't think he played poorly or anything. That's just kind of the way the other guys had it going. Um, and I thought the Celtics, again, they were playing really cleanly, moving the ball, a lot of assists, very few turnovers and shots were falling. Not like an amazing shooting night tonight, but a lot better than it's been the last couple. And they certainly made enough and got going at the right time. I think 36% for the game, even though I was like 19 for 52 crazy amount of attempts, but I thought yeah. they were mostly, mostly good looks that they were creating off good uh, drives, good ball movement, stuff like that. So again, overall, just other than kind of sloppy defense in the first quarter, I was pretty happy with just about everything I saw. Yeah. I definitely want to touch, uh, touch back a little bit on Porzingis uh, later on. Cause it was a quiet night. He only played 24 minutes. I don't What do you think? Was that just, well, uh, I think just ba- the, the back to back tomorrow. Keep in mind, we have another Something game like that. Obviously, right, yeah. want to keep guys fresh. And again, the Nets didn't, they don't really play a center. They were basically just playing, uh, all wings and guards. So um, Cornette played well. I think any, I think any time you, we kind of get a chance to rest pretty much any of our top six guys we're going to as much as we can. And, Things are going that, well. Do you think that Al was out on the first night of the back to back just because of the net size? Just a better. Um, I mean, or I'm do sure you... there could be a little bit more to it, but I think that 
probably played into it that if they're actually looking at the two teams, they figure the Nets are small and probably be a pain in the ass team for a guy like Al to play. They figure they can run out more more O'Shea Brissett, stuff like that. And I mean, again, good opportunity for Cornette. I wonder if it was had to do with like a quick turnaround from the other night too. So they give him the extra long break this way instead of on the other night. Like, I, I don't know the, the science behind yeah, it. Yeah. But... I just was sort of thinking that I, I, I mean, I'm not Toronto. I think just has a couple, they have uh just more bigs and stuff like Much, that. So I yeah, thought maybe that was why they have uh, Boucher, they have precious Achua. Siakam's bigger. I mean, I'm just a much bigger team in the front court. So if it was for that reason, like, <clears> that makes perfect sense to me. And I, I advocate for, if you're going to rest, I advocate for doing it strategically. Like, I hate when teams have a back-to-back and rest guys in the game against, like, the better team. So, I would say, I mean, Toronto's probably, like, a little bit better than the Nets. It's <laughs> fairly close. But, again, if, if this decision was made for that reason, I support it. Yeah. All right. Um, so, it was good uh, Good to see Jalen get back into things. Uh, he responded pretty early to start the game. He had the and one, uh, followed up by two threes, and then just kind of never looked back from there. Um, 28 points, three rebounds, five assists. Uh, five assists is kind of high for him, so that was nice to see him uh, kind of distributing the ball. Like we said, he's not much of a playmaker in that sense, but it was nice to see him moving the ball around a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, All in the first think, half, I believe. Yeah, I do uh, think – like you said, that third quarter got a little bit sketchy too. We sort of <laughs> let them back in a little bit. I think that that's something to keep an eye out. Uh, I think the third quarter has been uh, historically a quarter that we've struggled with. And I think they're saying in the broadcast and I sort of agree with it. I feel like that's kind of a quarter that uh, teams that are able to win consistently, those are the quarters that you kind of dominate. So I'd like to see us sort of be a little bit better. Um, I, I don't really have the numbers in front of me on what the third quarters look like. I think we had a pretty big third quarter last game, but overall, just something, something a little bit concerning to keep an eye out on. Um, I agree with what you said too about the defense in the fir- uh, first quarter. Uh, they had Brad Stevens on the broadcast, and you could tell that he <laughs> was kind interview. of pissed off about. Yeah, he was sort of. Uh, They're talking about the shooting. He's like, "Well, guys, just got to defend," and you can kind of tell that he was. <laughs> he had noticed that too. Obviously, yeah. the players don't don't hear that, but it was nice to see them respond. I'm obviously guessing that Joe. Probably had a pretty good talk with him on that. Um, it was awesome to see Pritchard finally find himself. I was telling you the other day, I was trying to get a little meter going for what language he was going to need to learn. So I think today <laughs> he's okay well, only speaking English. He doesn't need to get ready to learn uh, Turkish, uh, Chinese, or any other European language. Pritchard's off the hot seat for now. Uh, Hauser's stroke is definitely beginning to f- has found itself, which is nice. So Hauser had 15 points, Pritchard had 13 points. I think that's exactly what you're kind of looking for from those guys, you know, they don't have to be putting up huge numbers, but they, if they make shots when they get them, that that's going to be great. So Hauser was five for 10. Pritchard was five for 10. I think he was like two for like seven from three, but, but it, I, I can live with that. Uh, especially um, again, he was just doing the motor plays that he does too. Uh, some good rebounds. Uh, I think he had, he rebounded one of his own missed threes and then made the next three afterwards after that, which is pretty, that's always awesome to see that kind of thing happen. Um, so yeah, a Drew Holiday. Uh, he he kind of tore up the Nets team the first game he played. Almost had a triple double tonight. Thirteen points, twelve rebounds, nine assists. Uh, just a, overall, I think Tatum started a little slow. I'm not going to make any assumptions on what he did this morning or anything <laughs> like that. <laughs> I'm not going to repeat that mistake. But um, I don't I don't know if that's just a matter of Jalen had it going first, but he did just seem to be a little bit passive to start the game. I don't know if you had the same thoughts on that. Um. <sighs> It's it's interesting. I don't, I don't know if passive is the right way to put it. I mean, I think he had Mikhail Bridges on him. They do actually have some pretty good defenders for Tatum, and I think he's kind of feeling his way into the games and I think making a concerted effort to get some of the other guys going. Um, I mean, teams are like clearly sending a lot of defense at Tatum, and I think he's <coughs> kind of happy knowing the reason we got these guys is we have advantages elsewhere, especially if they're overloaded on me. So I think he's just taking what the defense is giving him. Uh, I mean, again, he kind of took over in that stretch in the second quarter. I don't think he had scored till that stretch. He had four straight threes and mixed in a free throw. Yeah, he, he didn't score till like 633 left in the second. So Yeah, he rolled in that three, and then he just kind of went off from there. Um, so, I mean, I have no problem with it. And again, I mean, we scored 38 points in the first quarter, so it wasn't like the offense was struggling. I think, again, everyone was just moving the ball and making the right pass. The Nets were playing some weird, funky defense defenses too they were almost like giving us corner threes so we were we kept making the extra pass getting good looks in the corner and we were just missing a bunch early as for, even for as many points as we scored I thought we left a lot on the table but I liked the process and most of it came around eventually um that Jalen sequence you mentioned at the beginning was awesome I also love that right in the middle of that sequence after I think in between the threes 
they gave it to him on the wing and he kind of like jab stepped it. It looked like he was going to heat check another three. And instead he made a great entry pass to Porzingis who we noticed had Dinwiddie on him and Porzingis had an easy little turnaround off the backboard. So I think the little plays like that are huge too. Um, just kind of, you know, not, not, a, and he easily could have chucked up the three there and I don't think anyone would have looked <laughs> at it or thought badly about it. So it was nice to see him make the smart heads up yeah. play in that situation. And also with Pritchard, not only, like you said, he, he hit his first three, then he missed the three, got his own rebound, put it right back up. Uh, so if anyone was wondering where his confidence was at, I think it's pretty good. And then also yeah. later, he got a rebound on his own free throw, which you almost never see. It was like uh, Brooklyn kind of just fell asleep. I don't know if they thought there was another shot or they just forgot to box out the shooter, but he snuck in on his own free throw, rebounded that, and uh, laid it in. And like you said, tonight the shots were falling, but they were doing a lot of stuff. Pritchard always scrapping on that offensive glass. He had some rebounds. Hauser, I think, playing really good defense. And then Brissett, always a hustle play every two seconds when he's in the game. I think Brad even mentioned that during a hustle play in his interview, too. And uh, the final guy, like we said, Cornette, I thought really good minutes. He had that awesome alley-oop from Derek White, but... He had a few so other a, good players. I have a and question about hold Brissett. Own. Should I just not expect that guy to be making like jump shots? Because he just has maybe one of the ugliest shots I've seen. <laughs> um, he, I, yeah. he, he's just not out there to score on like jumpers. I think he had one no. three of the shot clock them... was going off and it just was a total air ball. <laughs> he had another one that clanked off the back room. I mean, I'm, I'm a big Brissett fan. I like when he's out there. I think he's a dog. Uh, yeah. I think that, that he does do other good things out there. But, you know, I just want to make sure that my expectations for no, that guy are not a yet. shooter. Think more like a Tony Allen. Um, oh, in that, like, yeah, just not a clean looking shot. It, he can make it if, if teams leave him like wide open from the corners. You'll see him if they basically dare him to shoot it. He will. And he can make it. He's not like awful percentage wise, but it's not a pretty shot. And he's really not looking for his shot out there. He's kind of looking to do everything else, which, like yeah. you said, he is very good at. Um, But not a shooter. Yeah. So, uh. Yeah, I think uh, a couple other things. So we we touched a little bit on the bench. I think the fact that the the bench had 11 points in the first quarter, I think that kind of was a good tone yep. setter for the rest of the game. Um, people were feeling – I think everyone just felt more comfortable. And you mentioned Pritchard's confidence. Uh, we mentioned on the last podcast uh, after the Sixers game that maybe it is just a matter of, like, he just needs to see the ball go in. And I think that definitely was part of it. Um, yeah. What do you – what's – um. <laughs> What's up with Porzingis loving to throw the ball back up through the hoop? Like he, that's what he got his t- his tech for tonight. <laughs> I feel like didn't he do that in like the second or third game of the season? He got a technical then. Yeah, I don't that's know. Just it's just such a weird move, and then he was shocked. And I, I mean, some of the it other seems... techs I've had a problem with, but that was just like the know. exact it's, same. It seems thing. like they've had like a weird point of emphasis on certain techs. Like I've seen more techs for stuff like that and hang on the rim this year than ever. So. Part of it, I wonder if, you know, it's just like first couple of weeks of the season, they want to enforce like certain things. I don't know why, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's like after every game, we're like, all right, what if, what if we're us do to get a technical tonight? He's got uh, six technicals. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. So that's An outrageous face. Yeah, exactly. Because it's 16, <laughs> right? And then you're suspended for a game. Yeah. And it just feels like none of them are off of like the typical stuff you get technicals for. Like he's They're not really even like, like arguing with the refs. being like, an idiot. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um. What's with that technical rule? So it's 16, you get suspended for a game, and then how many do you have to get like another 16 to get suspended again? No, or does no, it... no. It's a way smaller. I'm not sure. It might be two more, I think, is another one. Then at a certain point, oh, it's like geez. every other one you get is another game. Right. Maybe it's an, maybe it's another uh, five, like five. I don't know. He's got to, yeah, he's got to fucking tighten up then. Uh, yeah, I mean. Again, I don't know if all of the different ones like count the same for that rule, if you know what I mean. Like I don't know yeah. if the When um, would we find out about that hang on the rim one if that got rescinded? That usually I didn't see anything that we would have already known and I didn't see anything, so I That is crazy if that one if that one that sticks one, with yeah, him. That one I, I'm with him on. That's just not correct enforcement or interpretation of the rules giving him a tech it, on that. But the other ones, I mean you can you can complain about them, but like they're calling it <laughs> so, you know is he, like you said he's gonna have to adjust in some manner just stop throwing the ball you, you just can't do that you just can't yeah. throw it hoop. clearly that's like uh yeah that's it's clearly not allowed <laughs> yeah it, it, it and clear. it's not like cool enough to do just even risk it it's like it doesn't matter <laughs> when he just did it again i literally was like what and they, uh, they call i was like what is he doing why did he do that I don't know. He seemed a little bit like off. I know the points. He didn't have a lot of points or whatever, but he seemed just like a little bit off today. I feel like there's a couple times too where I saw him sort of like moving slow up and down the court, like barely mm. even making it into like past the three point line on both ends, just kind of like almost like jogging up, up and down a little bit. I don't know 
Um, that might have just I might have just been locked in on him at, at just kind of a tough stretch for him or something. But I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't think, know if there's I mean, anything again, there. The pace of the game and again a team playing that kind of style is not <laughs> not really just like his ideal environment to um play in. So and I mean again I think guys still kind of just trying to find their rhythm who go in and out again. It was a big like Jalen night. You mentioned Drew was doing a lot. The Jays were both on. So it's just it's going to be I think probably hard to. Like I think I think every game we're gonna be able to be like, well, this guy had a quiet night, or you know, this, you know, I don't, <laughs> yeah. I don't think every guy's gonna score twenty five every night, but yeah, I mean, like we said, he only had two rebounds. To me, is almost weirder playing against a team with no center. Like I said, a guy that tall, I keep saying it, should just like, he should fall into t- like twelve rebounds a night by accident. And he just doesn't at all. He so, doesn't. Uh, yeah. I mean, I thought well, tonight he would have a better game where, again, there's really no other bigs. And it wasn't a problem. We Like, the team, we crushed them with our overall size, uh, even without Horford. But it's just still kind of weird. And, I mean, that was with, I think, Tatum had 10 rebounds, Drew had 12. So it's like the other, all these other guys are rebounding, which is good and important. But um, it's something that's going to have to continue and will really be a point of emphasis against bigger teams, as we saw playing, you know, and beat in Philly and then Gobert, Cat, and Nas Reed. Obviously, the Timberwolves, like... Those two games, just the style of those games, how they were played on the court and compared to tonight, was like two different sports. Yeah. Um, yeah, I also think it might just be, like you said, the, just the way the Nets play. It's like a very frenetic offense. That's just kind of the word I kept thinking to myself. Like they're just, it's almost like, it almost seems like there isn't a strategy the way they're just <laughs> kind of like like running and just shooting and doing everything yeah. like that. But obviously that is their strategy. It's how they played in the first game against us, how they played in this game. Um, and it gives people some problems. I think it, it, it's like it creates yeah. enough chaos that it can, you know, it hasn't caught us. I mean, they played, they kept it pretty tight the first game, not so much tonight, but I've seen them uh, play well against teams that they're probably like a little overmatched against, but the style is kind of so funky that it takes teams out of what they want to do. Yeah. And if those shots start to fall and they kind of, you know, they get a hot shooting night and they kind of bury someone quick, but it's, 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 yeah. they, they're a fun team to watch. They're a feisty yeah. team. I think they're kind of in that same boat as the Sixers. Um, Drew Carter was saying in the in the last one, it's like when you get out of that like tough relationship and you just kind of out there just having fun. <laughs> I feel like that's kind of like where the Nets are after that disaster they had with uh, Kyrie Harden and um, Durant. So yeah, it's it's hard to dislike them as much as I feel like I had the last few years, obviously. But um, it looks like they got a pretty decent thing going there for them. Yeah, nothing against the Nets. I think the thing is just more like, do they act? Are any of their guys actual guys? Like, that would be the one thing. Yeah, where, I don't know as a Nets fan. Talent-wise, like, yeah. No, but I mean, it's like, even, there are much worse teams right now than the Nets in the league, but you're like, at least we know these are our core, like, building block guys. I'm just not like, I, I really like Bridges, but I mean, he's already, like, 27, and he's he's a good, maybe, like, second option. I think he'd be a good third option, a, a questionable second option, and right now he's basically their number one guy. So, like... And yeah. I just don't know that like, they're they young. Know, yeah, like, yeah. like I, when the Nets actually get good again, I'm not sure if any of the guys currently on the team will be on the team. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, I, I saw there's more of the pressing today. I love that. I, I hope I, I hope that that seems mm. like it's going to be something they're going to be doing almost every game because we've yeah. seen it in almost every game. Um, and it should be. Yeah, it, uh, I just wanted to make a note of that. I, I just wrote it down a couple of times that they were pressing. Um, I just love that overall style. Do you think that's something, though, like that can be – over an 82 game season, is that going to be something that's going to kind of wear on guys, or do you think we have the, the the players that can manage that? I think finding the right balance is key, and I mean, you're not going to beat you, wear yourself out pressing a lot. But the way they've been mixing it in, it's usually you know a couple possessions here, a couple possessions there. I I can't imagine that's like not so like much West extra West Virginia. Yeah, and they're doing it a lot. You know, it's a lot like when Pritchard's on the floor um, and extra guards in there. Like it's it's not really so taxing on the Jays or like Al and Porzingis like. I know Holiday's a little older, but I feel like White and Holiday and Pritchard just have, like, endless motor. So asking them to press for even, like, five to ten possessions a game, I I can't imagine is going to wear them out. I just think in the NBA, it's like, it seems like if any team tries to press for too long, the other team will be like, all right, like, let's actually assess what's happening, run a quick press break, and start to, like, eat it, eat it apart, uh, pick it apart a little bit. So I think it's it's just knowing when to mix it in and using it strategically. It seems like they've done it. So they'll whip it out at, like, the end of a quarter or the start of a quarter or something, just try to catch the other team off guard for, like, two or three quick possessions. And, you know, those those stretches can help spark a run, can end a run, or can, you know, just end up adding up over time. Yeah. Um, all right. I don't know if you have anything. I, I have a couple not so much like X's and O's related things. I don't know if you have anything else that you saw. Um, I do I do want to mention uh, points off turnovers. You mentioned we forced uh, – we didn't have many turnovers, but um, 18-2 to two was the points off turnovers. I think you mentioned, too, the second chance points, 29-5. to five. 
Uh, those are, again, I think those yeah. are just kind of like those motor big kind of plays. Um, you dominate you have, those two categories, you're you're going to win, win almost every time. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you had anything else from just like an X's and O's or observation standpoints. I just wanted to, have, if you don't, I'll get into some stuff just about the tournament and things like that. Yeah, no, nothing else to say about the game, just good performance, and that's exactly what we wanted. Like, going in, I said I wanted to get a win, and I wanted to keep the minutes low so that we were ready to go tomorrow on the back-to-back, and I'd say we basically accomplished exactly that. Yeah, I was looking at the minute. The minutes were definitely uh, exactly what you'd want to see. Um, so it was the in-season tournament. I will, I'll say that I'm, I'm never, I haven't been a fan of the city jerseys. I've made that clear, although looking at, looking at them on the, the guys tonight, it, I actually didn't hate them as much as I thought I would. They looked a little bit cleaner than... Uh, I don't know. I think sometimes when you just see the picture of them online, it's it's easy to sort of jump on them. But I did think that they looked pretty good. Um, the court was all right. Um, I did think the warm up jackets. I don't know if you saw any of the guys before the games and like the warm up jackets. Yeah. I might have to get one of those. Those things look sick. The, no, the city warm up jackets. Those were clean. Those were very cool. Um, I I I don't think I think these city jerseys are better than a lot of the ones we've had which yeah. you know might be like not a great bar the bar's not super high but I yeah. we don't look like the Milwaukee Bucks in these ones yeah. like last year no they're kind of cool they look like a Celtics jersey the court is just a lot I it took me like the f- half of the first quarter I kept being confused like when they would start chanting or like playing music after we did something I kept it just like felt like it wasn't a home game like that just isn't like the garden <laughs> Big yeah. I was like, "Why are we? Che- why are they cheering for us?" I was like, "Oh shit! Like we are the home team." I saw so re- that took me a little bit. I saw a report that like the Celtics did request. Uh, and again, okay, I, when I, I say report, know. I just mean that someone tweeted it. Um, <laughs> uh, that the Celtics did request the parquet in the middle, and that the league did the league turned it down. I don't know. Again, it might be total bullshit, but. Uh, uh, if that is the case, that's crazy considering what like yeah. the Bulls floor looks like. I don't really. Like, some of those floors just look so great. I don't, I don't know why the parquet would have been an issue, but... That would be cool. And, yeah, I, who knows? It was funny, again, during that Brad interview, they asked him, they're like, how much say do you have on things like the court for this tournament? He's just like, absolutely zero. <laughs> None <laughs> whatsoever in yeah. any way, like, at all. So yeah. I don't know if it's all, like, who knows who's making these decisions. But, yeah, I mean, just watching... I've got the Lakers game on right now, and the whole... Uh, well, it's actually in Phoenix. The whole court is purple. And it, the middle part is like neon blue. It's just right. absolutely yeah. insane. The uh, the Rockets against the Pelicans that I think you mentioned it the other night. The court is bright red. Like the whole thing is is just so hard to even focus on the ball. So uh, by comparison, I mean again, I thought more than anything ours. It was just like jarring and weird, but I was fine with it. You know. Yeah. Well, yeah. So yeah, one and all get the first win in the in season tournament. <laughs> Undefeated in in season tournament play for the Boston Celtics. Dominant. That's uh, exciting. I think we play again. It's next Friday, right? Our next game, next uh, in season game. I, that sounds right. I know it's going to be all uh, Fridays are for like in season tournament. And I think Tuesdays will be eventually too. So those will just be specific nights where it's all tournament games. I guess is uh, the way we're looking. Right, yes, well, I'm looking right now. It's next Friday, November seventeenth, in season tournament game, Celtics at Raptors. At Raptors, okay. So the yeah. Raptors are in. So um, who we play tomorrow? Yeah, I was just gonna say that's kind of a perfect segue. Uh, <laughs> so the Celtics will uh, win tonight. We got the Raptors coming to town tomorrow. Non in season game. This is just a regular regular season game. Um, I think unless you have anything else to add, I think I. Oh, uh, I can't not mention Cornet's dunk that alley oop. Beautiful. H- him in those uniforms. <laughs> he looked like. Like literally someone's dad was out there or something like that. Like he looked like a fan. It was so, I don't know if his shorts were shorter than usual or something, but he, when he first so came out, I was, I like gasped. He looked like chunkier too. Like, I don't know. It sounds like you've noticed it too, but um, yeah, no, he looked, looked like look about, flattering. I just was waiting for, I just was thinking he was going to have like the new balance or like the monarchs <laughs> or whatever, like the, those shoes on. It, it was just incredible he looked absolutely yeah. hyster- he's the one person that looks the i think hysterical in his uniforms uh but he, he really had a great pops. game too uh uh for his time in i think he played like 17 minutes he had seven points nine rebounds and obviously that alley-oop was just awesome um you know so it's yeah. good to see that obviously with al out he needed to step up a little bit uh so it was good to see cornet show up just the whole bench again it kind of snaps and um you know I think uh, Brad kind of said it well in the uh, interview that he was saying. He's like, you know, all that stuff, water, it does eventually find its level. I think that's the term you used in one of the podcasts. Yeah. So, it was, yeah. It's good, but it was it was just good to see in a game we needed the bench to step up uh, that they did. So, um, yeah. 
but that cornet dunk, yeah, that's going to be a highlight reel <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Absolutely, he had, he had a great cornet contest as well uh, on a corner three, which <laughs> and it worked very effectively. I forget who was shooting it, but they didn't look they yeah. looked taken aback. But yeah, no, the bench was definitely a huge plus, uh, something we needed, and I thought Brad was very leveled and emotionless in his interview, but it was Belichickian. Yeah, I, th- I thought he said a lot of the stuff I've kind of been saying on here, which is, again, like, I'm not going to panic about good shooters missing shots as long as they're, you know, kind of doing all the other stuff well and playing the right way. And yeah. he even said, like, yeah, at the, like it's not good to have bench scoring, but, again, we're always going to have at least, like, two of the starters in who are going to be guys who can score. So it's more just them being able to play and not hurting us. Some nights they're, like, tonight, you know, where two guys are in double figures and Cornette has nine, like, getting a ton of bench production statistically. Other nights where just not this kind of game, we might get eight points off the bench, but it's fine because all of the starters are scoring. So it's going to look a little different, and it's hard to just look at a number and be like, oh, 15 points for Hauser, good game. Like, obviously, yeah. when he's making the shots, it helps. But again, they're, they've come far enough in other ways that, like, the fact that Cornette, Pritchard, and Hauser are out there and none of them were really at all, like, letting us down on defense. Yeah. I mean, that's huge. They've all that's been pretty good. Huge. Yeah, they've all been good on defense, even on the bad shooting nights. I think the. Right. The bench defense has been pretty good. Um, but yeah, so uh, that the Celtics again. Celtics win 121-107. Uh, moved to 6-2 and two in the season. 1-0 in group play. Uh, Raptors coming in tomorrow. Um, back-to-back, so that'll be an interesting test for us. Um, I, we can move on now, unless you have anything else to add to around the league. Uh, what do you got for us? Uh, what's going on in the association that the, uh, the Chudlings need to know about? Oh, a lot. Busy. Crunchy night in the association tonight. First, let's uh, go back to a couple of things to just clean up from last game against Philly that happened after we were went off air. Uh, first of all, did you see the Missoula Gary Washburn presser? Oh, yeah. Yeah. He, I, yeah. I, that, <laughs> so I, if I, you didn't see it, basically, yeah, uh, Gary, Gary's been on this for years, harping on the amount of threes. He's like always thinks the Celtics are shooting too many threes no matter what. And he... Uh, he asked Joe if something like that, and Joe kind of cut him off and ripped into him. Is like basically like Gary, like what's your problem with threes? Like you wrote an article like twelve years ago saying we shot too many threes, and like you've always been on this. Like what's your deal? Just kind of grilled him. And yeah, him. It was like uh... and, uh, and everyone was just like clut- <laughs> the media guys are all just like clutching their pearls over that. It yeah. makes no sense. They're all like, I've never seen a coach re- go back and read it. It's like, dude, you fucking wrote an article. And the guy, like, what do you mean? You wrote an yeah. article and posted it to the internet. Right. Like, it's not like, it's not like gotcha. he went to, like, a library, like, Rolodex or something and, like, tracked down, like, yeah. one article you wrote. Um, <laughs> that was, yeah. yeah. I, that was, I mean, he looks psychotic. Joe Rizzula uh, does. Uh, exactly. I but think I, I even it. grabbed a screenshot on my phone of, like, his eyes. The guy, like, the, like, crazy, the crazy eye eyes going. Yeah. But, yeah. No, I mean, I, I'm fine guy. with I mean, it. Leaning into his own psychoticness is yeah. nothing wrong with that. Like, I like Psycho Joe being a psycho. <laughs> yeah, it just was bizarre to me the 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 media reaction that people just kind of just like aghast that yeah, a coach was but, just like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> I yeah, know. I mean, not exactly shocking. Um, then the other thing from that game, of course, the last two minute report came out yesterday and said that MB was indeed out of bounds with three and a half seconds left, whatever, uh, on the baseline wasn't called. Obviously, and the game ended, so Celtics should have had a chance to inbounds underneath the basket with uh, almost four seconds left chance to tie the game. Uh, and shout out to Scal during the, during the game saying he definitely wasn't out. Yeah. Like Scal like comment. He's like, Oh no, I definitely don't think he was out. <laughs> Tommy would never, he was all over it. Yeah. Not so much. Yeah. That's, uh, I mean, doesn't do us any good now, but um, almost like just rub salt in the wounds really, but mm-hmm. worth mentioning. Um, further beyond that want to shout out we talked about Jamal Murray getting injured the other night was just watching Jokic absolutely carry the Nuggets to a victory without him and just always a good time to remind the Chudlings out there that you know stay up once in a while watch the Nuggets like appreciate how damn good Jokic is how much we take him for granted he just casually puts up like 35 12 and 12s every night leading his team to wins and we're just like yep just another night at the office have you seen that video have you seen that video of him where it's like it's showing like all these other like NBA stars like doing like workouts and then it's just like cuts <laughs> to him just like riding around yeah. his like horse and shit like that. That guy's the Love man. That. He is the man. And I think I also think that whole narrative and he like leans into the whole that he like doesn't care thing is just funny, but also like he's definitely like one of the hardest working guys in the league and absolutely lives in the weight rooms. Yeah. But just post funny shit and it is hilarious, uh kind of narrative. Had uh more kind of sad injury news now. Cam Thomas, we talked about the feel-good story. Now he's out for like a month. Um, 
It's just sad to see. Obviously, Rob Williams officially added his surgery out for the entire season. Just yeah. again, we've Bummer. already talked about that. It is very sad to see. Um, the Thunder, haven't mentioned them. Really fun team to watch this year, the Oklahoma City Thunder. They're already pretty good, and Chet Holmgren looks really good. The rookie who was out all of last year, he looks uh, like an immediate problem on both ends. So that was kind of the biggest question mark for them is do they have like enough true size Um but if he can keep playing like this, you know, they can maybe trade for just like a decent big. And I think uh, they're another team, maybe not quite as far along as the Timberwolves that we talked about the other day, but another just kind of like up and coming team in that West. That's really good. Uh, SGA. I mean, he made first team all NBA last year and yeah. they've got just so many good, fun, young players. So another team I've been really enjoying watching um, something else. We've obviously been harping on the refs and the technical situation. I don't know if you saw what the refs threw Giannis out for the other night oh, in yeah. the Bucks game. Um, he Jesus. dunked and basically just, like, flexed. Uh, not Nothing egregious, nothing really, like, taunting. The guy like, just taunting. happened to be standing right yeah. there. I don't think he was no, doing like, it in the guy's face. Definitely nothing at, remotely over the top. Like, you, stuff you see in every game every night, and the ref hit him with a quick second tech. It was, like, the middle, <laughs> not even the middle of the third quarter. And so, I mean, again, it's just... Seeing just a lot of tweets making good points, but it's so funny, like, the NBA makes all these, you know claims of how load management is ruining the sports and crying for fans who go to the pay all this money to see players and don't get to see them. And then you're kicking out, you know, one of the biggest stars in the league halfway through the game for no reason for just showing a tiny bit of emotion after yeah. making a nice play. It's just like, why do we have to do stuff like this? It's it, the, the NBA uh, it has an official problem that they're terrible. They've been terrible this year. And again, yeah. like they got to lay off the technicals. So that's well, that's for sure. Like, I don't know. If, again, I hope it's just they're like trying to make a statement in the first like 10 games of the year. They're like, all right, hammer the text. So the players like wise up or something. And then we'll stop. Like, I know the NFL always does stuff like that, like points of emphasis in week one. But yeah, so far it's it's pretty damn frustrating. And that's coming from, you know, I'm certainly not a Bucks fan, but it's uh, you, you don't just don't want to see that. It's stupid. No. Um, uh I thought it was also funny. Uh, Paul George had a nice press conference the other night, made a comment about how he's not at all worried about the Clippers uh, because they have too much talent to fail. I think is what he said. He said Dude, we're all they stars. Have so and, many like, like no way we comments that are out. just loaded in the chamber. Like he was Waldo for Halloween. Mm -hmm. That's just going to be, I mean, and... that's, that's going to get recycled a lot. Uh, yeah, the game just ended. I didn't I, see the they final. They got smoked tonight, right? They were, they were down by over 30 to the Mavs when I had it on. I'll tell you the final score in two seconds they oh they cut it to uh 126 144 loss so uh oh <laughs> so yeah they are now 0 and 3 i think with harden so that's yeah gonna be a fun, fun i can't believe that's not forward. working out for them that is i know it's like the arrested development meme it's like they're uh tobias <laughs> is sitting with his wife saying like they should try seeing other people just, oh does that work for anyone else he's like no but it might work for us <laughs> it's like exactly the hardened situation at this point that's a good and, meme. yeah just, good verbal point, meme. just really excited to see uh you know what team he requests to trade to next it's gonna be really fun uh, i think i think he's he's approaching the territory if this is a disaster for the clippers then like i don't know if there is like another team like it sounds crazy to say but I mean, at some point, like well, he's got, he's like 32, 33 now. Like he's yeah. like an old dude with a shitty contract. He's like out just like partying. Well, he has like no the... contract right now, but after this year, but yeah. Well, yeah. So that may be, he's maybe even more fucked then. But right. uh, yeah, I just, I don't know. Like it, I think I, I, there was some podcast, some player podcast. I forget, it might have been, might have been the Garnett and Pierce, or might have also mm -hmm. been the, um, I forget the fucking player, doesn't matter. But um, where they were basically saying, like, the, like, you know, the league, the league is going to be fine no matter what. Like, they'll, like players like that eventually get moved on from, and people just don't mm. want to deal with it. And this is so – that's right. what to keep an eye on. I mean – Yeah, just... no. Like, when he's pulling this crap and he's a legit top 15 guy in the league, teams will put up with it when uh, suddenly you're not worth it. Like you said, the, the league doesn't need him. He's going to need the league a lot more. So yeah. Like, would you say would change... you say Harden is a top 25 player in the league right now? Right now? No. No, right? Top no. – 40? I think he could still be helpful. Yeah, like he's probably at a certain point. I mean, it's it's hard to judge. It's it's again kind of this thing we talk about with like the rule of diminishing returns, where it's like if what you, a team needs is like an offensive creator to do everything, he's still one of the best at that. But he's not like good enough at that to to carry a team the way he was. So if your offense is like turn it over to Harden, you probably don't have a very good team. But if he was able to like adapt his game into a like complementary role which, again, he kind of did for part of last year with Embiid. 
but I'm not sure like how much he's willing to sacrifice and at what point it's not worth it. And you're like, if, if this is going to be his role, let's just go get a role player who actually like embraces doing these things and not a guy yeah. who needs the ball to be successful. But for him having the ball means our guys who are better than him aren't having the ball. Like that's just, I don't yeah. know, it's just like a zero sum game. So it'll, it'll be tough. And you see it happen to those guys who can't like some stars can kind of gracefully change and become like role players. I mean, look what like Ray Allen did when he came to the Celtics, but yeah, again, like Ray Allen, people forget, you know, early career Ray, when he was on like the box was a, like a dominant offensive piece who had the ball all the time and did everything. And by the time he got to the Celtics, he, you know, barely dribbled. So I just don't see James Harden making a transformation like that. I mean, he still doesn't even shoot catch and shoot threes, which is like insane to me, like a wide open catch and shoot three. He'll just start dribbling. Like, no, we need you to shoot that shot and like make it. That's one of the few ways you can help us. And he just like won't do it. So, oh my god, he's a disaster. I don't. I think he needs to come to terms with what's happening before, like it can work. And he I don't definitely think he's is not there. He's definitely not there yet. Uh, I think he'll need another year or two of humbling experiences, and then we'll see. But uh, get ready to learn Chinese, buddy. <laughs> yeah, and for him, you know, that might be perfect because he might rather just go to China and score like eighty points a game while giving fifty percent effort, and it could be like great for everyone involved. <laughs> <laughs> so that might actually be a reasonable option for him at some point. He seems to like it over there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> do you have any other? I I have one thing. The, go ahead. The only other thing I would only one other two other little things I guess one I mean. It, sounds lessened now that Peyton Pritchard had a pretty solid game, but I saw John Wall out there saying he's ready and willing. You want John Wall? Uh, I mean, I think uh, people keep bringing up like guards. I think we need to get another big, I don't really know. Yeah. Like not anything necessarily against John Wall. I mean, maybe he'd be, he could, I think he'd definitely I think be helpful, washed. but yeah, well, I know because his <laughs> whole thing is like, he just had a quick first step his whole career and now he doesn't really have that. So. Yeah, I don't know. No, I don't want it myself. I just thought it was a big name that was yeah. uh, floating out there. Yeah, a couple of the names every... that I've, I've heard people float out. I I just think it's like if we're going to use a roster spot, I think it's got to be on a yeah. guy that can be a big. So no, I'm good with someone who hasn't had a you know impact in like four years. Yeah, yeah. Um, speaking of trades, I thought it was funny. There was already a report I think from like Windhorse or Ramona Shelburne who said the Lakers are looking for a third star, which is just <laughs> just hilarious. Like they're so excited about this team, and now they already like want to trade. I don't know. Okay, getting rid of all these guys. You see, that so you see Lil it's Wayne said that if they're serious about winning a title, they got to get rid of AD. <laughs> yeah, I did see him say that. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, no comment. <laughs> just nothing really to add to that. <laughs> um, and then today was opening night for the G League, so huge deal. Nope. Um, Main Celtics get him back in action. They got a nice Lewiston patch on the jersey this year, doing some kind of uh, fundraising through that, which is nice to see. Uh, I think I saw be good a highlight to have of guys, something uh, that um, Jordan Walsh did today. Yeah, it'll be good I to get those guys. Was. Some reps, Walsh, Davison. We'll see who else is uh, up there. Tony Snell is still on that team, which is hilarious. Yeah, I yeah. Completely That's, forgot I saw about him. That. Yeah, it was his birthday. I think I saw I had yeah. the birthday Tony Snell post. Yeah, today. you forget that there are like a few veterans still like hanging on in the G League. But, That's wild. But it is exciting to see some of like the G League Ignite. I think has three. We talked a little bit about, but they have three of like the top guys. Ron Holland, I think, is supposed to be the number one pick. He's on the Ignite. So. There's like some real stars on that G League Ignite team. It could be kind of interesting to watch. I didn't catch any G League action tonight, but uh, I'll, be sure to, I'll be sure to wake up bright and early and start start uh, catching up on the G. Perfect. We'll have to do, start doing a G League segment. Uh, Definitely. I don't. I don't really have anything necessarily around the league. I just don't know if you saw uh, Mike Wilbon. Uh, they were talking about like someone. I forget. I don't know who who like the host was, but she was saying like, oh, like uh, you know, are people kind of sleeping on the the Pistons and he's like he's like yeah I think people really are I mean they got a lot of guys they got Cade and they just like froze and like didn't couldn't name like another single player and like he was just kind of getting clowned on Twitter I mean I I don't know if I could I, I know they have that, that who's that rookie they drafted a rookie that's like awesome oh, Thompson the other Thompson. yeah Thompson yeah yeah twins. Um, he is very good but but yeah I just thought that was just kind of funny I mean no, I mean they sometimes do have- they have good players. They've made some dumb plays and have some bad moves. Oh no, I'm sure they do. I just think I'm just, it it's is more fun. an indictment on Will Bond. Just like yeah, yeah. No, that's Jaylen just a guy. Garrett I mean, playing just, really well for them. Between uh, that I mean, and Washburn, they have Wiseman and Bagley, which is just funny. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they got a lot of guys. You got to look at the clip. It's, it's a funny name. clip. He All just right. like freezes. It's it's just like oh Jesus Christ. Love that. Love those guys. Uh, really <clears> exposing themselves. That is of course why you should not be listening to those big uh, dumb mainstream. 
talking heads, you should be getting all your basketball news and intel from Chuddy's Corner. Is the yes. message there? Yes, the new media. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yes, uh, the the future worldwide leader. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So all the more reason to listen to Chuddy's Corner. Mike Wilbon's an idiot. Gary Washburn's an idiot. I can um, name every player on the Pistons. There you go. <laughs> uh, maybe one day when it's a blowout game or something like that, we can do like a uh, like a Jeopardy. I'll set up like a Jeopardy board or something, and we can just like, <laughs> <laughs> like Oklahoma City Thunder eighth men for five hundred. Uh, Love it. That could be Case interesting. Jason Wallace has given them great minutes. Rookie <laughs> Isaiah Joe, one of the <laughs> sharpest shooters in the league, also. Yeah, you hear that, Will Bond? We're <laughs> coming for guys. you. Chuddy's corner is coming. Uh, just it's as an aside, we can wrap up, but just an aside, shout out to whoever the 10% of our listeners are in Germany. I was looking at the Spotify analytics. 10% of our listeners are Willkommen. in Germany. Willkommen. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah. yeah. Welcome, yes. <laughs> Chuddy's corner is sehr gut. <laughs> So uh, shout out yeah. to you, Ak-ya. whoever you are. And if you're just a robot, uh, that's just doing the numbers. Shout out to you also, just in case uh, yeah, we'll the robot it. overlords take over. Uh, anyway, yeah. Uh, you got anything else to add? Uh, we got the Raptors coming to town tomorrow. Should be, yeah. should be hopefully, you know, coming Quick off a back around. to back, our first back to back of the season for Chuddy's Corner as well. <laughs> so that'd be another interesting one too. Yeah, uh, no, should be a no rest game, days uh, for us. No load management. The- the Raptors are are looking pretty good so far. Very new look team with their new coach. Uh, obviously moved on from Nick Nurse. And they have Darko, somebody whose name I'm not going to butcher. Starts with an R. Um, Scotty Barnes so far, the player to watch. Looks like he's taking a leap to uh, potential budding stardom. So good to watch. And if he accelerates, maybe they finally will trade in an OBC Occam. Or maybe uh, they'll be good enough to go the other way and try to win now. So excited to uh, watch that game for sure. All right. Looking forward to that. Looking forward to being back here tomorrow night with you, Chuddy. Again, to close out, Celtics 121-107 win. They moved to 6-0 on the season. Uh, we will see you guys. It's about 11.30 on the East Coast. We'll see you all around the same time tomorrow uh, to recap the Celtics-Toronto uh, Raptors. Uh, Chuddy, you have a good night. Take care of yourself. And to all our fans out there, thank you. And Alfita Zen. <laughs> Peace out, Chuddy Heads.